To have this program included in your learning record, you must watch it to the end. Hello and welcome to Documentation, where we'll find out if you can write right. Let's meet our contestants. A big welcome back to our carryover champ, Kerry. Kerry is a direct care worker from Irwood Community Services in WA. Please welcome now Robin, a direct care worker from Coral Care in Queensland. And last but certainly not least is Joe. Joe is a direct care worker from Big Care in South Australia. Welcome everyone, terrific to have you with us. So, let's document. Our first round is better practice, what you should do. Should you use a blue pen when writing communication notes? Yes. So sorry Kerry, that was a tricky one. Although you may be using a blue pen, you should use a black pen. Should you use words like it appears to or it could be in your communication notes? Yes. Joe, I'm so sorry, that's not quite right. You should only write things you know actually happened. If you write, it appears to, or it could be, it sounds like you're not quite sure. Should you write in the communication notes after every service or visit? No. Robin, that was a great try. Most organisations say, yes, you do have to document after every service or visit, but the correct answer was, refer to your organisation's policies and procedures. Tricky round. Sadly, none of our contestants scored. On the upside, it does give us a chance to learn a little bit more about communication notes. All eyes to the Care College screen, please. Communication notes are a short story about what happened with your client during your visit. In this short story, you should write down what happened while you were giving your client care. It could be positive, like the client making and eating their lunch. or a negative, like the client not wanting to make or eat their lunch. You must also write down anything unusual or different that happened. For example, if your client would normally spend time in the garden but slept all afternoon, you should write that down. Unlike a made-up story, you can only write down things you personally saw, heard, smelled, touched or tasted. Keeping good communication notes is important for three reasons. One, so that the home care coordinator knows about any changes in the client's condition. Two, so that the next direct care worker who visits will know what happened during your visit. And three, so that the client's approved family carer knows what is happening day to day. It's important that your home care coordinator knows about any changes to your client's condition so they can arrange for a review when one is needed. A review may lead to changes to the client's care plan and care. This way, your client will continue to get the best possible care. Kerry, Robin, Joe, are you ready? OK, well, let's get straight back into it after this break. Then when Mrs Spencer and I arrived at the fruit shop, address 164 Railway Avenue... Some communication notes apples, are just too long. Kilo, but Mrs Spencer wanted to buy pink ladies. Some communication notes are too short. Uh, Mrs Spencer bought an apple. Uh, 
I went with Miss Spencer to buy the apples that she wanted. She ate one apple when we got home. At 1300 hours, we did all the exercises listed in her care plan. Concise communication notes. Getting to the point. Welcome back to Documentation. Contestants, hands on buzzers please for care comprehension. Our care plans... Documents you're writing? No, direct care workers don't write in care plans. That's such a shame. Mm. You came in just a little bit too early there. The question was, are care plans read by direct care mm. workers? And yes, you're absolutely right. Direct care workers don't write care plans, but they do read them so that they can mm. understand their clients' goals and needs. Yep. Okay, next question. Should care plans be read before each service? Yes. Well done, Joe. Yes, you should read the care plan before each service, just in case there have been any changes made. Our first correct answer, and that means we're off to Care College. When a client first joins a home care service, they have a case conference. The case conference involves the client, their family or advocate and a home care coordinator. The client's care plan is based on information gathered at the case conference. The care plan should focus on things the client can and wants to do. It should contain achievable goals and it should be reviewed regularly in case changes need to be made. The care plan should be read at the beginning of each service, not just the first time a client is visited. There might have been changes made to the care plan since your last visit. You need to know what those changes are. Your home care coordinator should also tell you about any changes to your client's care plan. Remember, your home care coordinator relies on what you write in your communication notes. They're used when reviewing your client's care plan. Correct documentation should be the difference between a care plan focused on some of your client's goals and needs and a care plan that's focused on all of their goals and needs. Care plans, communication notes and the care given, they really are so closely linked. Will Care College help our direct home care workers during the rocket round? Find out after this break. Is your handwriting a scrawl? Are your communication notes unreadable? If no one can read what you've written, then how will anyone else know what's going on? If you don't want your client's care to suffer, then it's time to get legible. Legible takes time. Legible is neat. Legible is not too big or too small. Don't get into trouble. Get into legible. Terrific to have you back. All right, contestants, I hope you're buckled in because it's time for the rocket round. Today's topic is reasons why we need to document. Remember, just a true or false response, please. Hands on buzzers. Okay. Documenting care is a legal requirement. True. Correct. Documentation can affect the amount of funding that a client is eligible for. True. Hazards should be documented and verbally reported to your coordinator. True. Correct. All changes, no matter how small, must be documented. True. Correct. Well documented records lead to improved services. True. Correct. Good documentation improves communication within the care team. True. Correct. What a round. Congratulations, everyone. Joe, you're in the lead as we head into an exciting new round called Observation. After this break. My communication notes were a bit sloppy. I suppose they weren't entirely accurate. But I didn't realise they'd end up being used in court. Mm -hmm. 
welcome back. You're just in time for our marvellous new round, Observation. We're going to show you a short clip, watch it carefully, then write down what you observed. In other words, anything you see and hear. But there's a catch. Just like real communication notes, you cannot include anything you think might have happened, anything subjective. Only things you know happened, things that you have observed, objective observations. OK, are you ready to observe carefully and document objectively? Yeah. All eyes to the Care College screen, please. OK, contestants, your communication notes, please. She's crying. She's upset. She's sad. This is a tough game. The correct answer is she is crying. We know she's crying. We can objectively observe that, but we don't know why she's crying. When we say she's sad or upset, we're really guessing about why she's crying. This is being subjective, not objective. She might be crying with joy. She might have just won lottery. Or she might be sad or upset. We don't know. All we really know, and all we should report, is that she's crying. Let's try again. All eyes to the Care College screen, please. Hi! Hi! No! Hi! OK, Kerry, Robin, Joe, your communication notes, please. He's yelling. He's angry. He's yelling. Can I just say, you are all doing an amazing job. Being objective is difficult. OK, the correct answer is he is yelling. I would also have accepted Jonathan. I'm so sorry, Robin. I cannot accept he is angry. Because we don't know why the man is yelling. It's a subjective answer. He could be yelling because he's angry, but he could be yelling because he's warning someone, or he could be yelling because he's hurt himself. Objectively, we can only say we observed him yelling. I'm so sorry, Robin. You have the lowest score and sadly <laughs> haven't made it to the final round. Yeah. Thank you. But thanks so much yeah. for being with well us. Done. Well, that uh, leaves Joe and Kerry to battle it out in the final round, Total Recall. <laughs> Kerry, because you're our carryover champ, you can choose your Total Recall category first. I'd like to see communication notes, 10 steps to writing right, please. OK, here we go. Eyes to the screen, please. Put a client ID sticker on every sheet of the communication notes. If you don't have a client ID sticker, handwrite the client information. It must include the client's name, address, date of birth and identification number. Write the date and time of each entry in the left-hand column of the client notes. You should write in black pen. Your writing must be legible, neat and clear. That may mean printing. Use correct spelling and grammar. Use simple language. For example, writing, he ate a biscuit, is simpler than writing, he consumed a biscuit. When recording a client's statement, write exactly what the client said and always use quotation marks. Every entry and postscript should have your signature, your printed name, and your job title. When you've finished your notes, draw a line through any blank space left on the line. Ensure client confidentiality. Store the folder away from general view. OK, Kerry, are you ready for Total Recall? I'm ready. Excellent. You have 15 seconds, and your time starts now. Um, always use a black pen, um, write neatly, write the date and time, sign all entries, print your name and your title, um, use the sticky label, put a line through a blank space, put the communication notes away, use a... Oh. Wow, what an impressive run. Champ, you had total recall on 7 out of 10. You only missed three answers. Use correct spelling and grammar. Oh. Use simple language and... When recording a client's statement, write exactly what the client said and always use quotation marks. But that sets the bar really high for our remaining challenger, Joe. Can he do it? Let's find out. 
Joe, seven correct answers and you will be our new documentation champ. Choose your category, please. Communication notes, 10 things you shouldn't do, please. Okay, good luck, Joe. Here we go, eyes to the screen, please. You shouldn't write up communication notes before you have given care. You shouldn't write communication notes on scraps of paper. They might get dropped, lost or forgotten about. You shouldn't use whiteout or erase entries. If you make a mistake, draw a line through it so it can still be read and then initial it. You shouldn't backdate, alter or add to old notes. You shouldn't use medical terms or unapproved abbreviations because not everyone will know what you mean. You shouldn't use slang unless you're quoting the client. You shouldn't write anything rude or demeaning. If you wouldn't want the client to read it, don't write it. You shouldn't leave a space before or after your signature. That way, no one can add to your entry. You shouldn't miss lines between entries. That way no one can backdate, alter or add to your entry. And you shouldn't make an entry for anyone else. A lot of information there, Joe. Are you ready for total recall? I'm ready. Excellent. You have 15 seconds and your time starts now. You shouldn't write rude things. You shouldn't erase. You shouldn't backdate, you shouldn't cover for anyone, you shouldn't miss lines between entries, you shouldn't use slang. Joe, that was a good attempt. You got six out of ten. You only missed four answers. You shouldn't write up communication notes before you've given care. You shouldn't use medical terms or unapproved abbreviations because not everyone will know what you mean. You shouldn't use scraps of paper and you shouldn't leave a space before or after your signature. That way, no one can add to your entry. But overall, a solid result. Well done, Joe. Thanks. So that means we have a tie. <laughs> Who will be the next documentation winner? Let's play our tiebreaker game. Name that change. I'm going to describe changes you should be on the lookout for, and you're going to tell me which category the change falls into. The first contestant to name three changes will be our new champion. Remember, if you see any of these changes in your client, you must report them immediately. Shortness of breath, rapid breathing, shallow breathing. Changes in breathing. Correct. Verbal abuse, confusion, mood swings. Changes in behavior. Correct. Walking differently, limping, unable to walk as far as before, less stable. Changes to mobility. Correct. Described as feeling sharp, dull, throbbing, or severe. Changes to pain. Correct. Using the wrong words, finding it hard to talk, slurring words. Changes in speech. Correct. And that does it, Joe. You're our new documentation champion. Congratulations. Thank you. How do you feel? I didn't know as much as I thought I did, but I've certainly learnt a lot. Gary, thanks so much for playing. It's been really great and I've learnt a lot too. Terrific. Well, thanks for joining us for Documentation, where we'll teach you to write right. See you next time.